Good evening everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing good. Uh, today I'm going to carry on with Civilization Module for second year students. Quick review about what we have dealt with last time. Um, of course, we have spoken about the Stuart absolutism. It started with James I and ended with his son, Charles I, sorry. Um, uh, he's the one, or he's the king, who was executed in 1649, more precisely, the 13th January, 1649. Um, then, among the people uh, who signed the death warrant of Charles I was Oliver Cromwell. And Oliver Cromwell is quite important for us today, because he's the one who um, governed England uh, during the interregnum period. Today, we are going to speak about the Commonwealth, or also known under the Interregnum, or even the Protectorate. Now, Oliver Cromwell, he, he is the one who was governing uh, during that period, but how did he get to uh, that seat? We shall explain uh, briefly in some details. It started in 1649. This date is not only for uh, the execution of King Charles I, but it was also the year of the Irish Rebellion in Ireland against the English Protestants. Oliver Cromwell and his new model army um, went to Ireland. By the way, uh, Oliver Cromwell has not always been um, the, the leader of the new model army, because during the English Civil War, um, the first English Civil War, more precisely, uh, the Parliament introduced the new model army, but it was under the, the, the leadership of Sir Thomas Fairfax, and Oliver Cromwell was only a, um, an officer in general. Uh, he governed or he ruled um, a small regiment at that time. But uh, at, uh, or in 1649, when the Parliament uh, decided to uh, execute Charles I, um, Sir Thomas Fairfax didn't like the decision, therefore he resigned and he left the path open to uh, Oliver Cromwell to get uh, to power. With that being said, Oliver Cromwell went to oppose the Irish rebellion in uh, Ireland, of course, against the English Protestants, and historians describe Oliver Cromwell for being cruel because he killed, he sieged a city called the Droida, and he killed more than, or uh, let's say almost, or even more than 3,500 people, uh, children, women, men, um, old men, uh, etc., he, went, he had to go back to England because, meanwhile, Charles II was raising an army in Scotland. Uh, Oliver Cromwell had to invade Scotland uh, in the north uh, in a battle called Dunbar, and he defeated the army of Charles II. Charles II, um, afterwards, he, uh, he moved to the south, and he met the army of uh, Oliver Cromwell once again in a battle called Worcester, and... He was defeated once more, then he fled to France. With that being said, uh, that was the last battle of the third phase of the English Civil War. Now we shall move to um, some uh, how did Oliver Cromwell uh, govern England at that time. I shall start with the fact that Oliver Cromwell was a Puritan. Puritan is, um, let's say, a form of... Uh, of um, Calvinists in England. We have two kinds of Calvinists in England. We have the Puritans and the separatists. The Puritans had always um, seen uh, England or the Anglican Church uh, for being too Catholic, uh, while on the other hand, the separatists wanted to be separated uh, from the Anglican Church. It was not uh, possible uh, during the, um, the reign of James I because he wanted to unify religion uh, in the three kingdoms. Now, with that being said, so Oliver Cromwell was a Puritan and he practiced what we call the Puritanical rule. Puritanical is a word which is not often used uh, in, uh, by the English, but still it exists uh, in a dictionary. To be Puritanical or being Puritanical, it means to be uh, unreasonably strict. Um, th th that is what we call, uh, for example, uh, dictatorship. Although there was a parliament, and by the way, the parliament was called the Rump Parliament. Uh, this Rump Parliament, um, uh, from his name, uh, it, it was uh, from its name. Sorry, it was purged 
uh, by Oliver Cromwell after the year of 1648 because he suspected that some members of the parliament, um, let's say, um, supported the Irish rebellion in Ireland. Uh, therefore, he either imprisoned them, killed them, or exiled them. Uh, afterwards, he left a small group of people who were loyal to Cromwell alone. Uh, this is what we call the Rump Parliament. So, going back to Puritanical rule, uh, he was a Puritan and he was a di dictator. Uh, everything he wanted to be, uh, people uh, had done it. For example, he wanted to decatholicize uh, the Anglican Church. Like I said, the Puritans had always seen the, the Anglican Church uh, too Catholic. So he wanted to omit some practices in order to, um, to remove that Catholic flavor. He, al he, he also wanted to, do, to change the name of Christmas. Uh, and um, before Christmas was celebrated in 12 days and he reduced it into one day only uh, because uh, people at the time were dependent on agriculture. So if you can imagine, guys, um, 12 days of n no agriculture, no selling crops, no uh, buying things. So only feasting and uh, drinking and um, etc. And there was no amusement as well. Uh, he for he. Um, forbid it, uh, any kind of amusement uh, or entertainment. For example, going to the theater was for, forbid it, uh, forbidden. Sorry, um, going to um, um, music was forbidden. Um, drinking was forbidden. Um, what else? Um, the inns uh, were closed, and some of them were given the time, the precise time when to close, etc. So this is. Um, Let's say um, the, the way Oliver Cromwell ruled England at that time, people were not happy. Uh, but of course, the, um, the, the, this, this kind of rule uh, was not always uh, or did not come always uh, with uh, disadvantages. Because if you take, for example, after um, Charles II uh, fled to Holland uh, in 1650, uh, 52 uh, or 1654, Oliver Cromwell, he introduced professional, professionalism. To, uh, it means to train armies. Uh, before we had what we call, uh, for example, militias. It means during the day you are a farmer, etc. But whenever there is a war, you take a sword and you go defend your country. But Oliver Cromwell introduced what we call professionalism. It means you are going to be a soldier for life. Um, it's like being a soldier is a profession, is a job that people wanted to apply for. And also, when the first Dutch war occurred, uh, and of course it ended uh, in uh, 1653, Oliver Cromwell uh, defeated um, uh, the, the, the Dutch and he uh, then called himself the Lord Protector. So, uh, then in 1657, um, the Parliament presented Oliver Cromwell's humble petition. Uh, they wanted him to become King of England, but he refused. He rejected the petition, and uh, in the 3rd September 1658, he died. Of course, some um, some people wanted to replace him with his son Richard, but he he was not uh, fit for such uh, a job. Then um, there was another era called the Restoration. Um, we shall uh, see that um, chapter in the next video, I hope, and if I have made this clear to you guys, um, that's more like it. If you have any kind of question, feel free to message me uh, or uh, to ask kind questions in the comments below, and I tell you, see you in the next video, and peace.